Hi, DJ Jordan. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing excellent, thank you. Oh. So, are you ready? Yes, we are. Come on in. Who is going to be your guest tonight? My guest tonight is my friend. He's a great comedian. His name is Luther Orokia. Mm, can't wait to hear you both. Are you excited? Oh, yes. It's going to be really fun. What's your favorite thing about being a host of Heartline's Youth? My favorite thing is you have the opportunity to be a voice of God to this generation. What's your favorite thing about being a youth pastor? My favorite thing is you get to hang out with people who are half your age and just really the energy and passion and creativity of the young. It's a lot of fun and challenging. Who's your favorite basketball team? The Golden State Warriors. Diba? What's one thing you wish knew in college? I wish someone told me it would take longer than I expected. How will you describe the 2008 fashion trend to the teens of 2018? Um, the clothes back then were way bigger than they are today. They bought them much shrinking. So back then, it's like more back here. Who is your favorite fashion icon? Probably Michael Jordan. Why did you choose that outfit today? Oh, my favorite shirt, my favorite jeans, my favorite pair of shoes, favorite hat. <laughs> so, and this speaks about who I am. And I love the design of your shirt. Okay, so uh, what is the weirdest food you have ever eaten? Probably insects, you know. One time I had some crickets at this Kapampan restaurant. It's not bad, but it was kind of weird at first, of course. One has to go. Lasagna, spaghetti, or pizza? I would say spaghetti. It's an open lasagna spaghetti. Mm -hmm. It was a special lasagna and pizza. Alright, so um, we're about to go to the other places. So I have Miss Abby here, and I think she has one question for you, so, DJ Jordan. Hi, Abby. Hi, DJ Jordan. What's your favorite app on your phone? My favorite app on my phone would probably be Canva because I get to edit photos that I will post on the Facebook or social media sites. Okay, mm -hmm. that's nice. You should try it. So, what toughest topic to discuss on your show? The toughest topic will probably be something that has to do with the LGBT. Because whether you come back to one or maybe go wrong or, you know, it's a difficult thing to deal with. Although in the past I have discussed uh, what happened in the U.S. with the legalizing gay marriage. How about a topic you always want to discuss in your show but never got a chance to? I think that would be it too because I haven't really had the opportunity to address it head on. So I'm getting some help from my friends who were uh, who are very more knowledgeable than I am compared to, you know, to what I know. How hard is it to become a youth pastor? Heart is not the word. I would say it's impossible to be a youth pastor. But, by God's grace, a lot of my people see it. So that's why I get to do it. A song that inspires you the most? The song Dry Bones or mm. Come Alive by Lauren Daigle. Mm. I love that song. Why did you choose to become a DJ? I think I didn't choose to become a DJ. I think being a DJ chose me because I didn't plan on it, but somehow. My, our paths got crossed during my Bible college days. Who's the most influential artist or person for you? For me, there would be two. If we were a male, it would be Gary Valenciano. If we were a female, it would be Tony the Rose, Asia's Most Wanted. So both of them are excellent artists and performers. And I was able to see through their life how you could balance faith and artistry and be excellent and just represent Jesus out there. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? Hmm, probably just try to talk less and not, try not to give it out so much. Aside from all the things you do, is there a goal you haven't achieved yet? Uh, probably with our young people, our youth group. I, I desire to see more young people come to know Christ, and more of them to disciple. Maybe another PBB Golden Double work would be nice also. And probably a couple more kids, if God willing. Wow. So uh, if you could have a huge collection of one thing, what would it be? Probably Air Jordans, if I had the budget to. 
What's the greatest thing you've ever done? The greatest thing I've ever done is simply deciding to accept Jesus Christ in my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. If you will live in an isolated island for a week, what's one thing you would carry with you? The Bible. How will you spend your seventh day on an isolated island? I would probably just relax. The first six days would probably be stressed. Uh, I'd be stressed with trying to find food. But on the last day, I'd probably just relax and chill in the beach. What is the best place for you to fit well in? Just at home would be fine. You're given the power to see the solution of one of history's unsolved mysteries. What secret would you pick to uncover? Probably NASA and uh, Art of the Covenant. How would you describe your personal or spiritual life? I would describe it as something that is fueled by grace. If God could take care of one, your problem in your life, what would it be? Uh, I don't really have any major problems or anything. I would say try to get more sleep or better sleep faster sleep. Same. <laughs> if you could lead one person to God, who would it be? It would be probably the most influential on Twitter or president. Well, I do have this dream of leading the next president or the future president of our country to the world. So we don't know who that is, pero maliba natin as a youth service namin or someone in the radio listening to the program. What important beliefs have you changed your mind on since following God? Well, I used to think that if you follow the world and did what uh, they told you to do, that would be fun. But now, anything that has to do with God, that's something that is uh, more enjoyable than anything in this world. What draws you closer to God more than anything else? Probably just the Bible and prayer and some worship music. What's your most favorite worship song? It would probably be Revelation song. Well, what one question would you like to ask God? Why me? How is God's love different from human love? It is different because it is so much more powerful and uh, long-lasting and unconditional. And it's also something that we can learn from and try to uh, follow after with our human love. Name a gift you will never forget. A gift I will never forget. Uh, there's so many. Anything that my mom or dad has given me as a child, I won't forget those things. Three things you love about your wife. Three things. Probably her cheeks. <laughs> she has nice cheeks. And also, uh, she is very soft spoken and uh, compared to me. And then, thirdly, she's just a wonderful wife. And to our baby. What do you think is the best part of being married? Best thing, can I talk about that here? No, no, probably waking up next to the person you want to be with forever, every day, and then also going everywhere with this person every day. What do you think is the toughest part of being married? Probably waking up to the same person every day, and then also going with the same person everywhere, every day. The most childish thing you still love to do? I think I'm still very playful. I like to be, you know, yeah, I'm a prankster and yeah, my wife sometimes has to tell me to <laughs> And she has to deal with it. <laughs> so uh, what values are important to you as a couple? I think waiting has always been something that we have uh, been advocates of. Even before we got married, uh, saving our first kids for the wedding. So we believe that anything that's worth the wedding is worth a wait for. Awesome. What is the best movie to watch with family? I was thinking about that and I think it's got to be Miracles from Heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it involves a, a child, a couple, a science, a nice movie. I want to see that soon. So uh, what does it feel like to be a dad for the first time? It feels amazing. It, it exceeded my expectations. I mean, seeing my baby for the first time, I don't know how it feels because it's like all the loved ones of my life, my father, who's now in heaven, uh, mom, my sister, all my loved ones basically came together in this one place. And we call her Naz, and she's 
absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. How about what's the best thing in being a dad? The best thing is taking care of uh, this little child who is growing up so fast. And whether it's trying to make her calm down from crying or trying to make her laugh, these are precious moments. So it's a lot of challenges, but it's fun at the same time. What's the hardest thing to give up? Probably food. <laughs> because it's so good. And sometimes you have to give up some of it for a time being so that you can keep living to eat more. How do you manage your time being a dad, a youth pastor, and a DJ all at the same time? Um, I'm thankful that I'm blessed to do things that I love to do that are not conflict of interest. So I'm a minister of the young people, whether I'm on radio or I'm preaching on the pulpit or I'm posting somewhere. So it just comes together so well and it fits so well. And I thank God for allowing that to happen. What's your role in the family? The peacemaker, the caretaker, the rebel, or the outcast? I would say all of the above. I see. So um, we're now about to uh, finish this interview. So uh, this is the last one. How about your message to Baby Ness if she could see this video 10 years from now? Oh, hey Ness, we love you. Um, we know that you are now 11 and uh, whatever you have become, uh, we are proud of what you have become. And we are sure that you are doing well. And I, I can't wait to meet you. We can't wait to meet you someday. Okay, so uh, I think we're done with the interview. So uh, thank you so much and for your giving your time with us. Thank you so much. God bless you. Goodbye. Yeah.